Queen Anne is Cunard's newest ship. She is the 249th ship to carry the Cunard flag. The ship is 113,000 gross tons and carries just shy of 3,000 guests. While the ship itself is smaller than Queen Mary II, she is larger than Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth and introduces a number of really exciting firsts for Cunard. For the last few months, I've been working with Cunard and their team there to create a series of tours of Queen Anne. In October 2023, we presented these to international journalists and travel agents at the shipyard in Fincantieri. I was very fortunate to get to the shipyard before the tours and spend two days on board the ship with Cunard's brand manager, Francis Fred, to learn my way around the ship and identify the different spaces because she still is under construction, so she doesn't look like she will do when she's finished. The event started with a dinner in Venice where I got to present a short talk about Cunard history to the journalists and travel agents that had joined us. But the real exciting part was on the following day, where we got to go to the shipyard together and tour Queen Anne. Although Cunard did engage me in my professional capacity, they have not paid me to make this video, and any opinions that I share here are my own. So let's go on board Queen Anne, and we'll start our tour at the top of the ship, meaning we get to take a very exciting ride up an industrial elevator onto deck 11. When starting the tour at the top of the ship, we assembled outside the giant glass Magrodome that sits on top of the pavilion pool area. The Magrodome's actually been recreated during the ship's construction period, with the current design reimagined by designer Martin Francis, who was also involved in creating the Louvre Pyramid in Paris. We'll get to the pavilion a little bit later on, but to start the tour, we will make our way inside the ship, up the A stairway, and forwards to the Commodore Club. The Commodore Club on Queen Anne not only is the largest Commodore Club on a Cunada, but it also has a dual purpose. Not only is it a bar at night, but during the day it's going to be a fantastic place to enjoy a coffee. And this is also great because it's positioned right next to the library, meaning you can grab a book, make your way into the Commodore Club, have a nice drink, sit down by a window and enjoy a quiet morning on board the ship. Leaving the Commodore Club, we'll make our way through the wedding area of the ship. And this has really been activated on board Queen Anne. The space can be utilised as three separate spaces, the Admiral's Lounge, the Boardroom and an open deck area. But when weddings are hosted on board the ship, it can be combined into a beautiful wedding venue. After the service is completed, guests can move out into the reception area and then flow outside the ship into the open deck space to enjoy a drink with a beautiful backdrop of the ship's funnel and of course the wonderful ocean sailing past. What a fantastic place to enjoy uh, a wedding at sea. Making our way back down onto deck 11 and we'll head past that giant glass dome again and head towards the wellness studio. The wellness centre will be utilised throughout the day with all sorts of activities. It allows natural light in but will be covered in shade cells as well to offer sun protection. It will be a place where you can go for dancing classes, ballroom dancing, zumba and also fencing as well as traditional stretching and yoga with a beautiful view of the ocean. This forms just part of the wellness concept on board the ship, which has been fully developed in partnership with Mareel. And we'll see some more of that as we make our way through the ship. But what is interesting to note, you'll find wellness elements on the top deck, in the menus of the main restaurants, and of course in the spa facility as well. If we head a bit further aft, we get a view of the funnel, and underneath the funnel on the top deck is the grill's terrace. In the days of old, Cunard's crew used to allow passengers in first class to reserve their favourite deck chair. This space has taken it one step further with the creation of an entire oasis for passengers to enjoy who are sailing in those grills accommodation. There will be two infinity pools, one on the port side and one on the starboard side, and beautiful awnings allowing for partial or full shade. In fact, you'll notice throughout the ship that designers have been engaged to create areas that really take into account how different people like to holiday. And so when the ship is complete, you'll have options for deck chairs or cabanas, full sun, partial sun, or shade, taking into account how different people enjoy spending their time on the top decks of the ship. 
Let's step inside the ship now and go down one deck to deck 10 and have a look at the grill's restaurants. As we make our way into the centre of the ship, we'll find the grill's lounge, which will be an exclusive area for grill's guests. The grill's lounge will have a glass ceiling that will allow you to look up at the funnel and in the centre of the space will be a preserved tree. On the starboard side you'll find the Princess Grill restaurant and on the port side you'll find the Queen's Grill restaurant. Staying on deck 10 and if we go to the very aft of the vessel we'll find two of Cunard's new dining venues, Sir Samuel's Steakhouse and Ajawa the Japanese Cuisine. This is a fantastic space with sweeping views over the aft of the vessel. The restaurants are positioned one deck above the Panorama Pool Club allowing guests to enjoy their meal with a beautiful view over the pool club and then aft as the ship makes her way from port to port. You'll also notice that there's a lot of curves in the design of the ship and this is purposely done to allow Queen Anne to have a unique terraced effect and allows for the introduction of awnings to allow for more shade for passengers. Looking down on the Panorama Pool Club, we can see the swimming pool, but also there will be a bar here for drinks to be served during the day and into the evening. From the sea stairway, we'll make our way down to Deck 9 and walk through the Artisan's Food Hall. And this is where part one of this tour ends. Be sure to check back next week for the rest of the tour, including a look at the Artisan's Food Hall concept, as well as checking out the extensive pavilion pool area and exploring the amazing amenities on Deck 2 and Deck 3, including the largest chart room to ever go to sea and the Bright Light Society. We'll also take a sneak peek at the bridge. So be sure to subscribe so you can get that video in the not too distant future. I really had a fantastic time working with Cunard on this project and sharing the ship to the journalists and the travel agents who came along to Fincantieri. Everybody at the shipyard was so welcoming. The Cunard team are so passionate about this ship. There's lots of great stories that have come out from this tour, newspaper articles, vlogs, blogs, YouTube videos, so I encourage you to check a lot of those out. I've linked some of them in the description below. Thanks once again for watching. If you're traveling on Queen Anne when she enters service next year, let me know in the comments what are you looking forward to most. And until next time, I hope to see you on board.